This fifth archival motor racing film of mine is different because I didn't shoot it, but I do have very personal links to it. The only other coverage of this race on YouTube is so blurry and dark you can hardly see the cars. It's virtually unwatchable. I'm about to show you the Movie Time News coverage of the 1963 Armstrong 500, the first one at Bathurst after the previous year's race at Victoria's Phillip Island destroyed its crude bitumen. By now you well know I used to work at Movie Time News in Sydney starting a couple of years after this race. The 35mm Araflex cameras were used were light so they were portable and easy to lug around in the field but they were silent. The sound cameras were way too big and heavy for general daily news work so they only got used on sports where they could just stay on the huge guy ride tripods like at the Melbourne Cup horse race or the Davis Cup tennis as you see my dad using here. So most news film was shot without sound, the sound being added later from libraries which were limited and completely out of date, especially when it came to car sounds. I know because I had to use some of that rubbish on the films and documentaries that I worked on as a sound editor at Movie Time. So in bringing this 63 Armstrong 500 to you, I've replaced the original rubbish car audio with modern stuff. And I've taken the newsreel commentary off. It's a little bit dramatic. And I've added, hopefully, uh, a voiceover that's a bit more informed. And I've enhanced the video and I've added zooming titles and a bit more information. Each week, hundreds of prints went out from Movie Tone to picture theatres all around Australia. And as our property, most of them then came back to us at Camperdown. Mountains of them. When the shed down the back got full to, literally to the roof, we'd load the vans up and dump them at the tip. As I lived at Homebush near the tip, where the Olympic Village was built, I was soon given the job no one wanted. Reel after reel I'd throw out into the mangrove swamps until the council dozer driver would complain about the ribbons of film all through his tank track. So one day I pick up this tin and I'm just about to throw it out on the tip and I can barely make out the words Bathurst on it. So as a young petrol head I take it home because my dad's got a 16mm projector. The digital copy I present to you today is only two generations of the film that was in that camera on the day of the race at Battles. Add a little vision enhancing and what you're going to see is even better than new. So that's the story behind this film that you're about to see of the very first Bathurst 500. This was the fourth running of the Armstrong 500 touring car race, open to standard production sedans with four classes based on the purchase price. Outright victories were not to be recognised until years later. Falcons virtually disappeared from this race, replaced by an influx of smaller, more versatile Cortinas, and this race became the first Ford vs Holden head-to-head -head fight, with the Cortinas vs the EH Holden. The centres were pulling out of a lot of the Holden rims.
pit row had no protective fencing for the crews at all. There wasn't any spectator mounds either and the race tower was on the outside of the track. Here's the wily old fox himself, driver and team leader Harry Firth with his chief mechanic, John Sawyer. Pits were virtually non-existent and just had a narrow canvas covering. Harry Firth worked out a way of getting fuel out of those drums faster than anybody else, saving him time refueling the Fords and giving him yet another race winning edge. <laughs> 